If you want to get a job in cybersecurity, then you have to have skills that will separate you from the thousands of other applicants who are vying for the same position. On this channel, we teach those skills. And if that is of interest to you, then please consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for future content. So today we'll be talking about patch management and automatic vulnerability remediation. But what is patch management? So Intel defines patch management as the process of applying updates to software, drivers, and firmware to protect against vulnerabilities. Now, if you can automate the process of deploying patches, then what you shift, well, you've actually achieved is what's called automated vulnerability remediation. But keep in mind, not all vulnerabilities can be remediated through patches, and we'll discuss that in future videos, right? And so I have a link to the Intel definition of patch management here in the, the description of the video if you want to read through that. And so how do we automate patch management? Well, one way is to use a tool like I'm going to show you today, the one I'm going to show you today, which is called Automox, and I use it every day. And in fact, it's intuitive and it works great. And I do want to thank Automox who provided me with access to the tool. So let's get into the video. Today, we're going to give an overview of the console and I'll dig into each individual feature in this video. And so with the dashboard, it provides a heads up display of your current stats uh, of the patching program. So compliant devices right here on the first top menu, right? So it shows the number of devices that are up to date based on their policies and schedules. And you can click here to open a list of compliant devices right there. Once again, there's nothing in the console at this point. So this is going to be an overview of the policies executed. This shows the number of policies that are running in the last seven days. Uh, right here, you have the available updates. It shows the number of available updates that have been exposed within the last seven days. And you can also click this one to open the list of available software updates. Uh, new devices, this shows the number of updates that have been exposed within the last seven days. And so you can click here uh, to actually view a list of those devices. Okay. And then you go to device troubleshooting. And so under device troubleshooting, you got your needs, like your needs, your boots. And basically this section is you use device troubleshooting section to review any devices that need any type of attention. And that includes reboots. The device has patches or software installed that require a they require a restart before installation can be completed and then you can click this one to open a list of devices um list of devices and it's filtered down to those that just need a reboot and then fail to update attempts or failed update attempts you can view all devices that fail to successfully install patches a manual intervention might be required so you can click to open a list of devices that failed uh, update attempts in addition to that, you have 30 days, 30 disconnected for 30 plus days, and you can view devices that are not connected. It's possible to take a, any patching actions. It is not possible to take any patching action until the devices are connected again. So keep that in mind. They have to be connected. And so if something's offline for 30 days, then typically it's been decommissioned. There's something wrong with agent or something like that. And you can click to view a list of those devices. And then not compatible. So you can view a list of devices that do not pass the compatibility check, which means sometimes if it's a Mac OS device, they devices require access to what's called the secure token. If it's a Windows machine, maybe it can't connect to the Windows update servers and stuff like that. So these all show up as non-compatible. And so that's in a troubleshooting section, like in the Ottawa's documentation, you can, well, the troubleshooting section of the device details page is where you can find more information on that. And we'll talk about that um, in future videos. So you can also click to open the list of devices that are not compatible. So outstanding patch count right here. This is what this grid shows both scheduled or available patches in relation to the number of days a patch has been left unpatched. These patches can be part of either active or inactive policies. The number of devices affected by the outstanding patches is listed below the grid. So you can see right here, zero devices uh, affected. And so the thing is we'll have once we get some devices in Automox, we'll have uh, that information. Uh, that it'll populate. And then let's see, the number of devices affected by outstanding. A device might have more than one outstanding patch. And so you can see right here, this is your outstanding patches. All right, so let's move on to the next section here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And there's something else on this one. So you can click on any council of these right here. You can click any patch count number to view the software page filtered by the level and days exposed. And so there's a grid right here. So that actually would be like here, okay? Level and days exposed by clicking any of the software account. You can click the highlighted device link uh, after the grid to view a list of all devices with outstanding patches. 
that's right here and then you can click the highlighted patch link to view a list of all software patches that are impacted by environment that can be clicked right here so after that we go to scheduled path policies right here this section here you can view all scheduled policies from the scheduled policy scrolling timeline so it's going to be a timeline that you'll see right here these are organized in tabs by policy type and so this shows the policy schedule in local time. Once again, we'll be breaking down all these things in future videos, okay? Environment operating system. So environment operating system chart shows you the devices like the OS distribution for the current zone. So you can see how many Windows, Mac, or Linux devices you have here. Device health, the, this chart provides a count of device with outstanding patches for each group, okay? So you can see different groups and you can break it down by the multiple groups here and Automox, and you can see the outstanding patches related to it. I'm actually probably going to use this today. Um, those good example, or actually I have to do a report on Monday. And this feature is one that I came across so like, okay, this is going to be very helpful. So other than that, all right, so you can select groups to be specific or select all from the drop down menu right there. You can also use the search bar to find groups. So there's a search bar. Where is the search bar? Okay. I don't see the search bars. Unless this is talking about somewhere at the top, but once again, I don't necessarily see it. Oh, there it is right there. There's the search bar. Okay. So, so when I'm, this is funny doing these videos, you learn stuff like that. You did not know. Definitely. All right. And so in this part, you'll be able to select uh, the different lengths of time to view right here, uh, to view, um, uh, patch ages, seven days, 30 days, 90 days, 180 days, all listed here. The default patch age for this chart is 180 days. If no groups are selected, then the first 10 groups are shown in descending order. So when you click inside of the column, you open the device page filtered by the group. So right here and in specific time range. So if you click it, you'll open the column this like filtered by group and time frame. We'll come back and we'll have data populating this. So a lot of this will make more sense. And then the last part of this page, you get down to your critical patches. So the critical patch table shows the top five critical patches in your environment. This list starts with the highest number of devices not patched. And so what it'll break it down, it shows you the patch name. All right. And that's the name of the software patch. And you can click to open the software page. The percent patch, it shows the percentage right here of devices that have been patched. And then devices impacted. So this list the number of devices impacted by the patch right here. This will be in this section. Uh, the highlighted number of devices needs to be patched. You can click the number to open the device filter page by the impacted devices. The bottom number, which will be the total down here somewhere once it's populated, uh, is all devices in your environment with the patch. Okay. So that covers the dashboard here. So let's move on to the software. Okay. And this is like a checklist right here. So I like this. I active best practice policy to reduce your risk by 80%. Our recommendation is to establish a best practice, a seven day patching cycle with a simple and customizable policy. So looks like Automox is giving you a plow, uh, Microsoft Office KB updates. Looks like they're giving you some, some really good guidance right here. So if you're starting from zero, here's something they would give you policies or rules, uh, to define how, when, and what systems, uh, you want to automate patching to run. So this is good. All right, so let's move on. Let's talk about software, this page right here. All right, from the software page, you can view details about the software associated with your device. I love this because pretty much it gives you a list of everything. Like for instance, all the software that's installed on the operating system, uh, Automox kind of does an inventory of it. And you can come here and filter down and you can see like for, for uh, uh, like a, a patch or for a software package, you can see how many days that has been exposed like since it's like available and how many days like literally that has been not deployed to the device and stuff like that you can ignore devices i'm not going to get into many details this is all a separate video so whole separate video coming on the software section and then we go to the manage section which is actually multiple sections that it breaks down into five sections all right and so for the policy section right here this is where you can create uh, patch software you can create a patch Software, well, I'm reading like the documents. I, I'm, I was just put this in my own word, but here's what it says. You can create patch software and custom configuration policies that are enforced regardless of geographic location. So in layman's terms, I'll show you but based on this, you can basically create these policies that allow you to either deploy different patches or you can do custom scripts and stuff like that, that you can use to accomplish other things using PowerShell or shell scripting. So very helpful. 
the manual approvals okay so this is for highly sensitive systems like servers to manually review and approve patches prior to deployment this is something we haven't used a lot uh, on my primary job we do have like separate schedules for the servers but i'm actually interested because we do have several clients who do have some manual server uh, like patching uh schedules so i'm interested in actually seeing how we can uh, utilize this and then you have the groups this is what you saw here groups allow you and i'll click on it click on the default groups they allow you to organize and manage system updates using groups so it's basically just a way of organizing different devices in the categories right and then you have the remediation section i'm actually pretty excited about this so you can do a manual import which basically you can create a list up by uploading a csv and then automox maps them to the appropriate devices for remediation so that's pretty dope so essentially what i love is like when you go here you can actually do an import you can do generic but you can import for crowdstrike qualis rapid 7 and tenable right and then you also have a separate partner integration that integrates directly with rapid 7 so you can automatically sync vulnerabilities from rapid 7 inside vm to have remediation tasks created all right and then after you get past here you get to the worklet catalog and this is a catalog of worklets that allows you to immediately use verify worklets for your for your purposes you can also create a policy based on the existing worklet Worklets are basically these are scripts that other people have written or Automox has written and they are approved by Automox to be available. You can see the creators here that to be available to people who are using Automox. So you can literally click here and create a policy directly from it or you can view the details of the policy and stuff like that. So this is very, very helpful. OK. All right. So let's see. Now we get to the reporting tab. Reporting tab is divided into quite a few items right here. So you can view the activity log, and this report allows you to, to list historical events, both automated and manual, on the devices in your zone. The log can be exported and used for debugging and error management. Uh, this is very important because when we have uh, like all these different policies running and stuff like that, we're looking for errors and failures and stuff like that. A lot of times it gives you good output and error codes and stuff like that. And we can then work with Automox to say, OK, uh, this error code is being generated when trying to patch this device. And we can work with them to kind of figure out what the issues in, is and fix that. So the device will continue to be manual, uh, to be automatically patched and stuff like that. Uh, and then on the reporting page, we also got the policy results report. I click on this for you. And once again, it will be more insightful when we have data and we'll populate the console in future videos. So this is a report of the most recently policy runs. You can see the success rates and understand which devices has failures so you can remediate them immediately. Very helpful, right? Because once again, you're going to get failures. I don't care what product you're using, you're going to get failures, okay? And at some point, it's just matter. You, you want to make sure that failure percentage is as low as possible, right? And then on the overview report, this report summarizes the state of your devices, the, of the devices in your zone, which is which is your console, your tenant, right? You can see the big picture that includes devices overview, history of patches applied, and scheduled patches by group and age. All right, so this is going to be your right there, your overview report. In addition to that, you have your needs attention report. Okay, and you can do this by group. You can do all groups for default, right? And so this report provides a list of devices that need attention have failed to install patches or perform remediation, along with relevant information so that you know exactly where to focus on. So they're keeping you like once again they're really making this easy if you ever done it with other products you understand how these tools can be helpful you got the pre-patch report once again you can do that by groups we're going to select all groups here this report provides a list of scheduled patches per device along with the severity and exposure information allowing you to effectively assess internal impact and then finally for the data extract the data extract provides access to multiple types of data to download including historical patches activity logs audit logs the time frame can be defined up to 90 days in the for up to 90 days in the past and that is uh the last part of the console here so i've linked to some other videos on my channel so if this was helpful don't forget to drop a like on the video hope it like encourages you if you have automox hope this kind of gives you some insight onto something that you've already used if you don't have automox maybe you want to consider signing up for a trial with them thank you again automox for giving me access to the console and don't forget to check out some of these other videos that i'm going to link here here or you know somewhere around here basically that will teach you other things so uh anyway i teach all on my channel things that really do get your job in cybersecurity. so i hope that you will subscribe and see you on a future video